know, all these things are set up to make our lives easier. And when they work, they do. But when they don't, they can make you want to pull your hair out. And I don't have much to spare. <laughs> Today we are embodying the the title of this live stream series, which is, as we all know, Remain Calm. We had to do that. Speaking of Marcella, we have the beautiful Marcella Beach here, and she is working to balance, working at balance from home. Here we are, just living in it right now, right? Like as if we just got the microphones to work and now the kids are running, the dogs are barking and there's just chaos happening all the time. We're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna go with it. Because our lives have become so, they, they've shrunk you know, so much as far as actual physical geographic location, right? I mean, we are all literally living within the walls of our homes right now. And especially now in South Carolina because they just recently did, as opposed to a strong, They've actually required that we are stay at home at this moment other than those essential things so let's talk about this this new norm and from your perspective i mean let's talk to all the, the mommies and daddies out there about what's happening you know we're hearing it in your background right now so what does that look like for you you know it's funny because i think um i think we create this image of what it's supposed to look like like i have been a work from home mom for the past six years i have a six-year-old and i have a two and a half year old and and that looks different day to day. But when you're actually forced to be within your four walls instead of having the kids go to school part time or hiring a babysitter, we're not hiring babysitters right now. We're not going to school. We're not going to the coffee shop to take 10 minutes. We're just living in it, which is I think is what is so different about about the work from home status now. It's no longer stay at home mom, work from home mom. You're now a teacher and a babysitter and just kind of micromanaging everything day to day, but within your own four walls. There's there's literally not much to escape from at this point. One thing that I think is really important about that is, is organization. And that's just something that works for me. And I think it went from, I thought I was organized and people were like, I don't know how you do it. You have it together. And I'm like, well, I thought I had it together until this happened. And then I was like, I don't think I have it together anymore. <laughs> That's what makes it, you know, there's normal and then there's new normal, right? And we're always adapting and there's always yeah. new normal. In this case, it just all happened sort of at once. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, you may have had it the way you wanted it for what was normal before, but now we're being forced to recalibrate. Absolutely. And I think that's part of what everybody's a little bit overwhelmed by is you're you're forced to recalibrate, but you're also what does that mean and what does that look like for you? Everybody kind of bases a a new norm based off of what they see, but everybody's new norm is so different. Like just because you see one person rolling this way, that doesn't necessarily work for you. It might not work for your time frame. It might not work for the way that you understand business or organization. Some people are visual, some people are hands-on. I mean, I think a lot of it comes from the pressure that we receive from outside. We're watching everybody kind of handle this their way. So we think, oh, I have to be doing it this way. That's what's working. And and there's no real, there's no real how-to book. You're not going to get like how to work from your house during a pandemic for dummies. It doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> Well, you might have just come up with something that uh, we can make a million dollars on. I'll just put it on my checklist over here. The, write, write a book, another book, because I'm like, I have all these other ideas. Let's just add that to the exactly. list. Exactly. Well, you know, no time like the present. I mean, you know, for, for me, I mean, we've talked about this too. You know, I'm, I'm, what I do for a living puts me in, in my car in a lot of cases and just sort of running around town and, um, you know, physically being in various locations. And so, even though my work largely can and does and has followed me home, uh, which is great, I'm, I'm thrilled to have it. But um, that time that is taken really just in that, not even really a commute, but just that transition from one place to another, one physical space to another throughout my day can really be repurposed. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and so, but I wanna talk about expectations because that's something that we talked a little bit about off camera that we really wanted to get into. And you're talking, and it's something that I think is really important for people to reflect on, right? Because especially with social media and 
now more than ever, people are on social media because once again, they're stuck at home and they that's the way to mentally get out of their space. Um, mm -hmm. So there is, there's always this, you know, there's this term FOMO, right? Fear of missing out that really has come up relative to social media in particular, because you're watching all these people and you're seeing their lives. But what you're seeing is the edited filter, you know, takes 24 hours to produce this one image version of their lives as mm -hmm. opposed to the real what's going on behind the scenes. And then you match your expectations for your own life based on that nip tuck edited version. And it's not realistic and it's not even realistic for them. It's the best polished version and it's a snapshot. Right, exactly. And I think, um, I think that's really important when we talk about expectations because there's a difference between what is actually expected of us and what we think is expected of us. And I think we are partially our own worst enemies when it comes to expectations because we see how everybody else is doing it and we're watching the ease. And like you said, this Polaroid panoramic view of somebody's life, but they don't know the backside of it. They don't know if they broke down and cried before that moment finally hit like peace and calm and they just don't know. So I think part of the thing that we need to realize is our expectations are so much higher than what the world is expecting of us right now. The world and the people around us are just expecting us to get by, honestly. Like everybody's just expecting everybody just to kind of move at their own pace. We, on the other hand, are expecting ourselves to be teachers overnight and be stay-at-home moms. Some of us are career-driven moms that have hired babysitters and daycares and paid for school all the way up to now so we could have a career. And taking a career shift to being a stay-at-home mom is a very heavy task because you, you lose that sight of what you give back to yourself. So becoming a stay-at-home mom is never easy on any level, whether you do it in the beginning or you do it mid-range. Mid but you have to remember to take care of yourself and setting expectations that are on, they're not there. There's no expectations, but you set them for yourselves. So you have to be cautious of what you're expecting of yourself and what you're giving back. You can't just keep giving out and not give back to yourself. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are stay at home moms. They are a lot of people that do homeschool. And these are the people that I think now is the time to introduce yourself to those people and ask for help. And we don't ask for help as a, I mean, as a community, we just don't ask for help. We're very prideful in our own sense of the word. So we don't, we forget that people have been doing this and this is their normal. So to ask them for quick tips and tricks, people are gonna be more helpful than we think, especially in a sense of chaos. You know, it, it kind of takes down those barriers, it takes down those walls that we put up against everybody. It does. And what I've, it, I kind of, in my mind, I've sort of created this analogy of, you know, life now has become analogous to like how your makeup routine changes when you're on vacation versus when you're at work, right? It's a totally different thing. Um, I'm not very fussy as it goes, but still, you know, it's a very different thing where, you know, you wake up and you're at the beach and you just toss on a few things or whatever, you shag your hair up and you're ready to go. Yeah. Life has done that now. Oh yeah. I don't think I've gotten out of my house slippers in like a week. Like I, I'm dressed on top, but every time my husband comes home, he's like, uh, you're still in your slippers. I'm like, I haven't left the house. I mean, I got dressed and legally that's uh, not allowed unless you have to. So there's your right. <laughs> right. And honestly, it's funny. Cause like my hair is curled today. Normally it's in a messy bun. This actually was something that I learned off of one of these little videos on Instagram that they're like, put your hair in a pony and like curl this section and curl that section. So I tried it this morning and I was like, Hey, you try something new. You might as well. I'm not going anywhere anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, my hair's looked just about like this for the last week or so. so. <laughs> I was ready for the salons to open back up. That's one thing that I'm waiting for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but speaking of like that, you know, and, and my first my first session of this show, we also talked about uh, with Audra Soto. We also talked a little bit about self care, but we were talking about it more in terms of how are we staying, you know, mentally sane and healthy and, and all of that. In this case, though, I thought you know we're we're talking about things that are really also very important. And that is how are we, you know, how do we see ourselves in this moment? And um, I've been seeing some really funny memes about, you know, your expectations, speaking of expectations, your expectations of yourself is slowly like ticking down. And, you know, like I haven't been used to being this ugly in a really long time. Right, <laughs> right. But that's the, I mean, that it, it, and I don't think, no, I don't think that. No, I totally get what you're saying. It's just a, it's just a shift. 
But somehow or other, right, magically, we just so happen to all be fine with it. So I think well, that's really important because it does cast in a new perspective to say, okay, people don't actually care that much after all. And I think that that is very powerful to realize. I realized it a long time ago. Right. It's, you know, but that's a really good thing. And mm -hmm. I can still see people mentally struggling with that on a regular basis. And yeah. I just think it's really important. Oh, I just heard my voice isn't coming through very well. Thank you, Irving. I'm, let me see if I can figure that out. Um, but anyway, that's, that's just sort of my thought. So how, what are you, I know you're a runner. So, um, and I love the fact that Wyatt loves to go out with you. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> viewers, for those of you who don't know, Wyatt is her little adorable chubby cheek mister. And he's the cutest little baby I've ever seen in my life. But um, yeah, so what are, you doing? are you still doing some of that? Because luckily you're allowed to leave the house for that. Yeah. So, you know, self-care looks different for everybody. And I think, um, for, for me, running is a, a very important part of my mental health. And it, it comes, it's actually a lot more accessible to me right now because I'm not running out of the house to do so many things so much. I just, I can't, I don't need to go anywhere. So I'm able to prioritize my running and why it is he's six now. So he runs alongside of me instead of running in the stroller and Bailey's in the stroller. And and it helps set a tone because, you know, as a mom and, and or a parent, moms, dads, single together, it doesn't matter. As a parent, our version of reality seeps into our children. So whatever we are feeling in this moment is what they're going to anticipate this moment as. So they already don't understand. They're already not in school. They're not allowed to play at the playgrounds. They're not allowed to talk to their friends except for virtually, which I mean, is like, it's like something that you would expect to worry about when they're like 15 and some of y'all's kids are 15 mine are so young i didn't think we were going to hit this until teenage years that they were going to be virtually connecting so to give them a sense of stability and to ground them to to reality is helpful for me to be a mom to be to be there for them and to help them understand you know this is chaotic but we control our own chaos so if that means taking a run riding a bike I, I do daily self-care because of I'm a skincare enthusiast, so I'll come out in my mask and why it's like, mom, you got your mask on? And I'm like, I do. And it's just something, honestly, that makes me, on for the show today. <laughs> I know, I'm like, it just makes me feel human again. And I think that, again, goes back to our expectations of ourselves. Just because we're in the house or we can't go anywhere doesn't mean don't get dressed, don't put your makeup on. If that's what makes you feel good, you do it for you. You don't do it for the people out there. I know a lot of us think that we put ourselves together for the people out there, but day to day, when we put ourselves together, we're putting ourselves together for ourselves and to make ourselves feel good about what's going on today and to tackle our own daily list. So if that's what makes you feel good, girl, put your makeup on in the morning if that's what you want to do. I mean, I, some days I'm like, I got to put real pants on because I've been wearing shorts and yoga pants for an entire week. And I'm like, I didn't even run today and I wore workout clothes. So tomorrow I'm going to put jeans on. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Well, that, I think that's such an important point that you brought up too. And that mm -hmm. it's true. I mean, when you, and it's true for, for girls and guys, right? I mean, when you do whatever it is that you do to create the outward feeling of how you see yourself, mm -hmm. better or worse, right? Right. That that mirrors, it mirrors your version of yourself with what the world is seeing. That's really all you're doing. It's not about them, nope. it's about you. So if you yeah. get up and, you know, if you don't care and you've got a messy bun and sweatpants on, if you are comfortable and happy, fantastic, do your thing. But if you look in the mirror and you think, <sighs> might be time to wash that hair. Yeah. And, and it's for you, right? It is. It is. You and how you feel. And that is part of that mental health where, where we're yes. going, especially when we're stuck in these walls right now. And I think people feel guilty about, because we don't, we can't ask for help right now, right? Like I said, you can't take the time. Some of us are single parenting. Some of us have spouses that are still working in the field. So you might not have that extra person in the house. You don't want to call a relative to bring them to the house because you don't know what's out there. So you feel guilty for, for taking time to yourself, but you know, tablets and Disney plus and Netflix y'all it's not going to kill the kids for 10 minutes for you to go outside and take a deep breath like we need to remember that without a healthy us there's not a healthy house so whether you are alone or with somebody 
to take that 10 minutes for yourself is going to replenish that energy that you're going to need to get through this. And it might seem harder in the moment because we feel this guilt of, of taking time away from the kids or, well, my friend doesn't watch any TV with their kids. Well, you know what? Some days they're going to watch TV. Some days they're going to go outside. Some days they're going to eat a bag of Cheetos for breakfast and you're just going to have to survive. I know. Um, but yeah, that, and I love that. And I love the fact that, you know, you mentioned this, this sort of, this sort of guilt and just to sort of change um, how we're thinking about that for a minute, because going back to that appearance, though, right? Uh, doing whatever you feel like you need to, whether that has anything to do with your appearance or not. Maybe it's just screaming into a pillow for three minutes. I mean, it, you might need to do that. You might need that release, right? There is something to be said that's like physical release. <laughs> Terry, like that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but whatever it is, right? But I think it's so important not to allow yourself, because again, it comes from you, not to allow yourself to feel guilt. You know, for me, if I say, I want, like, for me, one of the things that I absolutely want to have, if I'm doing anything to my face whatsoever, first thing I do is my eyelashes. I love mascara. That's what I do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we all have our favorite features, right? And so for me, that's definitely it. And, um, you know, so if I do that, I'm, I'm right. But there, then there's this idea that you're not supposed to care. You're not supposed to care what you, you know, what you look like. You're not supposed to be vain or anything like that. I just think that that's a bunch of BS personally. I think that if it makes you feel good, you need to do it and you need to own it. Yeah. And again, like you said, it's just, it's coming through the grapevine. It's not something that you set for yourself. It's something that you feel people are setting outside of us. So, so what we really shouldn't be doing in this time, like there's things that we are expected to do things that we shouldn't be doing is we shouldn't be judging other for the others for the way that they are coping with this because everybody's coping mechanisms are different. Whether that's putting your mascara on in the morning, running outside when people say you're not supposed to, whatever it is, you can't judge the way somebody is coping with the now because this is the reality right now and everybody is trying to manage it the best way they can. The other thing is we can't compare ourselves to other people's journeys. Everybody's journey, everybody's job, right? So by comparing ourselves and by allowing other people's opinions to dictate our mood is just drawing this out longer for us. So those are things that I really, I, I help encourage people, you know, it is hard. People are in it and they are in the weeds and they are feeling it. But the best thing that we can do is raise them up, help them out, pull them, pull them by the collar and say, it's okay. These weeds are going to get cut soon. It's fine. Let's just move on. Don't judge them for how they feel and don't, don't give your opinion where it's unwanted. My husband calls it unsolicited advice. He doesn't take unsolicited advice very well. So, so we, and it's not our job. It's not our job to tell somebody how we feel. And if they ask for it, that's fine. But I mean, really everybody has their own opinions. Let bygones be bygones and don't take it to judge what your mood is gonna be for that day. Absolutely. Well, I think that was all very sage advice. So quickly before we wrap up, um, do we have any questions? Guys, if you have any questions, we are live. So if there are any questions, um, I have one more that I will kind of talk through with Marcella as we go, but just think about them. If you have any, just go ahead and pop them in the comments and we will address them um, if indeed there are any. But other than that, um, so Marcella, let's talk a little bit about, so with what your husband does for a living, talk a little bit about that because you, you guys together, you own a company, you are entrepreneurs. So you even outside of Rodan and Fields, of course, you have that and that's helped you have a great deal of time freedom in your life, which is fantastic. But above that, um, Nick has, and guys, Nick is your husband, to put those two together. Um, Nick has this great company and you're helping him with, you know, sort of the back office stuff and all that scheduling. And let's talk a little bit about what he's doing right now too and how home improvement is looking and really sort of shifting the, the the topic for the moment because i think this is also a really good time in talking about mental health right to pick some projects take a time to or you know make a day make, make it tomorrow with the yeah. calendar right pick something and then you're also adding value to your space it's not only for your own mental health you can enjoy it while you live there but you're also adding actual equity value yeah. So my husband and I own a remodel company. So he's working a lot with people in the area that are remodeling right now, you know, and when Danielle and I started talking about kind of 
the the direction of when we wanted to do this. We wanted to talk about expectations, but one of the things I think we should be doing right now is focusing on planning ahead. We we can tackle those to do lists that we don't have time for, and and time is relevant to how you see it. So everybody has time for what they prioritize, right? So. So these little things at home or realizing the space that you're within um, and how much space that is like we do. We have two small children and we knew buying this house. It was a starter home for us. And we were going to, you know, we were going to sell eventually within 10 years because you start a business, well, you buy a house and then you start two businesses thinking that you're just going to float everything. So now we're like in it and we love it, but we're looking for bigger and more space. But we never in a million years thought that this would happen in the middle of our 10 year plan. So here we are six years into our 10 year plan and we're like, whoa, we don't have the space for this. We don't have. So we have all this to do list. And 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 ladies and gentlemen, if you marry somebody that's passionate about their trade, they often forget to do it at home. So I am married to an amazing remodeler. He can build you anything. He forgets that he has a house at home that we need to work on. So, so now's that good time to tackle that list and to set a plan and to, to set some goals. And what does that look like? Does that look like adding onto your space or does that look like moving into a bigger space? Does that, that plan look like a plan B so this doesn't happen? What does that look like? And what I really want to talk about in, in making that plan is now is the time to nurture those relationships with the people that can help you do it. Like, a real estate agent in the area that knows the market, that knows what's going on, that knows how to benefit in the value of your home and what it needs to take. Because if you need two months or you need a year, you talk to someone that knows what they're doing and do it. The mortgage agents, the bankers, these are the times that you can make friends with these people because first and foremost, so many people are looking for that communication. They're looking for that value in in a conversation there are a lot of extroverts stuck in the house right now and they would be <clears throat> happy to have a conversation about your plans and your goals for the next five to ten years they would love that it would it would do nothing but excite them so while we're setting expectations for ourselves and kind of avoiding what we shouldn't do what we should be doing is planning and 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 checking the boxes on all right well how can i make the best of right now who who don't I know? Who can I meet? Um, support local businesses. You know, when people say that, everybody thinks of financial stability and they were like, well, I don't have the money to spend. Supporting local businesses is not necessarily spending money. It's sharing on social media. It's engaging with their posts. It's talking to a friend that's looking for that connection. So if somebody asks me, hey, I'm looking for what my house is worth, I'm going to introduce them to Daniela and say, I know somebody that you can talk to right now. And, and now's a great time to talk about it. So those are kind of the things that we should be doing. Terry may ask for one daily indulgence. Yeah. Terry, do I have to pick one or I can I pick? <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, how do I narrow this down? I know, are we talking like my, my face mask or talking about my ice cream that I'm eating while I'm face masking? What are we talking about here? Cause- Is it the 30 a.m. glass of rosé? I don't know. <laughs> yes, I'm a person that I, I am a, a people pleaser. I am a giver and it has taken me 30 some years to actually give back to myself. And now that I've realized that it's okay, you know, it's okay. The best daily indulgence, pick your poison, Terry May. What is your favorite indulgence? That's what I think. <laughs> exactly. I think it depends on the day for me because I am all over the place all the time. So for me, this is quite normal. I'm just bouncing off the walls. So right. It's just a little, that's, that's been the biggest thing for me, but you know, I've said in the past, you know, I love having these conversations with people and because I can help you. I have all this knowledge and, and experience so I can help you. I'd be used to it in far as, you know, insofar as my industry. So um, that to me, like, I love having these conversations. This is wonderful. And, and speaking of helping your community, right? I mean, this is one of the things that I can do. Everybody, for the viewers, I would challenge you. It's not always about writing a check. What can you do? Even if it's a one-to-one -one thing, it doesn't have to be one-to-many. What can you do to help support, you know, less freedom at the moment, physical freedom? We do have more time in a lot of ways, and we can repurpose that. They got the look. They got the look. Um, yeah, and you know, okay, to go off of that, Daniela, what, what you're what you're doing, I think right now, 
is a good time to inventory the value of our relationships right now. And that's something that I say often, but we have the time to sit here and spend time with quality people. Now it's not hand in hand, face and face to face, but you know, if people don't serve you or you feel like every time you read something or you talk to them, you feel drained. Now is the time to, to repurpose the value of your relationships and either put more into the good ones or kind of pull back from the negative ones because that's where we're, we're that's where you're going to grow. And, and now no better time like the present. You can't see anybody anyway. So if you, if you stop talking to somebody, they probably won't know it until August. <laughs> well, thank goodness for virtual meetings, audio difficulties or not. Yes. Marcella Beach, thank you so, so much for joining me today. I hope everybody, the viewers, I hope you got some value from this. I know we went through a lot of topics in a fairly little amount of time. Um, we will be back with session four on Saturday. We'll be talking about real estate investing and what that's going to look like coming up and some opportunities that might be opening, uh, as well as the short-term market. So please do tune in for that. Marcella, thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me.